Hi, and welcome to Cultural Characteristics. Here's where we're going. You're going to understand the concepts of common cultural characteristics and be able to list several examples of these kinds of characteristics in your own life. Researchers who have studied cultures around the world have identified certain characteristics that define culture. These characteristics are expressed in different ways, but they tend to be present in nearly all cultures. For example, initiation. This is a depiction of Freemason initiation circa 1745. Rites of initiation mark the transition of the role or status of the individual within the group. In every business, there are groups, power struggles, and unspoken ways that members earn their way from one role to another. One might move from newbie to full member to keeper of the flame all within the few years of serving in an organization. Think about the history of the Coca-Cola company. The history of every culture of every organization has a direct impact and influence on the present business environment. For example, there might be struggles between those members who have seen the company weather storms and those new members who want to bring new ideas to the table. All organizations and cultures also share common values and principles. Usually, the time and length that you're associated with an organization has a direct proportion to your commitment to those values and principles. If you don't share the values and principles of the organization, your identification with that organization is very low and you're not as likely to stay with them for a length of time. One example of common values and principles is demonstrated by the United States Air Force. The Airman's Creed states, I am an American Airman. I am a warrior. I have answered my nation's call. I am an American airman. My mission is to fly, fight, and win. I am faithful to a proud heritage, a tradition of honor, and a legacy of valor. I am an American airman, guardian of freedom and justice, my nation's sword and shield, its century and avenger. I defend my country with my life. I am an American airman. Wingman, leader, warrior, I will never leave an airman behind. I will never falter, and I will not fail. These values and principles create norms. Without reinforcement, these norms may change. The next cultural characteristic is that of a common purpose and sense of mission. This answers the question, why are we here and who do we serve? The answers to these questions are found in the vision statements and mission statements of almost every organization. Members are expected to buy in to the common purpose and sense of mission in organizational mission statements, actualize them, and make them a reality through action. Mission and vision statements are powerful calls to action for any organization. As Nietzsche argued, he who has the why to live can bear almost any how. Organizational cultures also have common symbols that mark them as a group. They show who is a group member and who is not a group member. You might have bumper stickers on the back of your car of brands that you respect. You're identifying yourself as a part of those organizations or even as a fan of those organizations. Cultural symbols include dress, for example, the suit and tie, the Scottish kilt, or the Islamic headscarf. Symbols can also include slogans or sayings. These slogans or sayings can also serve a marketing purpose, but they may also embrace the mission or purpose within the culture. Symbols can also be used to communicate rank or status within the group. In many cultures, the person with the most status is entitled to a physically elevated position. Subordinates may be expected to bow or lower their eyes as a sign of respect. When an organization moved from one office space to another, employees were given the opportunity to choose their office space. The way they chose their office space was by counting the tiles in the ceiling. The more tiles, the greater the office space. The larger the office space, 
the more likely that person would be perceived as a high status individual within the organization. Is your boss allowed to come and pat you on the back, whereas you may not be allowed to do so because of cultural norms and boundaries? Communities also share their own language, their own jargon. Cultures are great systems for demonstrating the power of language in the communication process. Language has the power to shape our perceptions of our role within the organization. At Apple, even the roles reflect language and its power. The status of an individual who's labeled genius is higher than that of other individuals in the organization. Cultures also have rituals, the keynote address by the CEO. Organizations also have heroes and villains and stories that help strengthen the sense of culture within that organization. Rituals serve to guide our performance and behavior, and they can be limited to small groups or celebrated across the entire company. Rituals can create a greater sense of unity within a group or constrain the group in ways that are unhealthy. One of Apple's organizational heroes is Steve Jobs. So to review, all cultures have characteristics such as initiations, traditions, histories, values and principles, purposes, symbols, and boundaries. And examining each of these dimensions helps shed light on each organizational culture and how each organization will behave.